Assistant Principal and Miss Kathy Bedney, um, Assistant Principal for Post 16. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. As Miss Walker just said, my name is Mr. Lockwood and Daniel Lockwood, and I'm the principal here at Ashton University Sixth Form. And I'm joined tonight fantastically by Kathy Bendy, who is the assistant uh, principal in charge of all the Sixth Form. So welcome this evening. A uh, bit of a strange evening. We're clearly sat here virtually talking to you. And we've done this before over the last year because, of course, we've had to deal with and adjust to the situation of being virtual in COVID times. But we know that it's not ideal. Um, so we apologise on behalf of the situation, but we hope tonight is going to be really useful for you to be able to understand what is going on and how to answer all your questions um, about coming here and joining the academy. So we're going to be around 40 to 50 minutes tonight um, talking to you initially and then we're going to go into, we're going to, into a presentation. We're going to talk you through a bit more about life in the academy, answer some of the key questions um, around being here and what you need to know about starting and your day to day life. And um, we're going to reference um, the document being the sixth form handbook, which you should have all received hopefully electronically over the last couple of days. Um, and you'll be getting a hard copy of that in due course as well. So we'll talk you through and uh, take you through many of those um, information within it. The other thing to talk about today really is that there is a Q&A box available for you. Um, on the top of your screen, you should see, or depending on your phone, if you swipe, you should be able to see a Q&A box, which at that point enables you to um, actually ask us any questions. And I've got my team on hand tonight who will bring those questions down to us as well. Spendy. Good evening, uh, Master has said. My name's uh, Cathy Bendy and I'm Assistant Principal of the Sixth Form. I'm really proud of the Sixth Form and, and where we are, are heading, where we are at the moment. And I'm really pleased to be um, seeing, well, not physically seeing you guys, but knowing that you have joined us this evening. And I look forward to having you here, hopefully in September. OK, so we're going to move into the, today's presentation to start with and we'll go through and answer the questions. And I'm sure how, do, how many times a day and how many meetings I start by saying meetings, I hope you can see uh, what I'm seeing. So um, we're going to take you through the presentation um, and talk to you about it. And this will be available afterwards on our website, um, not only this year, uh, you can also watch last year's as well. So you can compare us, uh, see how we're doing from one year to the next. And certainly for me, how much older I've got over one year as well. So as mentioned, the key people um, talking to you, obviously clearly myself and Kathy tonight, and the voice you heard uh, from above, from the loft, our producer today is Helen Walker, who most of you will know as our emissions manager, and is here as the person who you can directly contact after the event. So during the event tonight, please use the Q&A button uh, to ask those questions. And after the event, please keep those questions coming. Well, if you're watching this um, on record, please do make sure you ask those questions and we'll answer them for you. So we know moving to the sixth form is a challenge. Um, of course, that's the case. You know, you're leaving your current school, you're moving and choosing that next stage of your education, which in itself is exciting. You're selecting the fact that you're starting to really make that first decision from general GCSEs and level two qualifications into selective level three courses, which are starting to take you towards the direction of travel for your future career, university, apprenticeships and jobs. So that in itself is very exciting. But in the current times of COVID, we understand that also might be quite daunting. So we want to really make sure that through talking to us from tonight, through opportunities going over the next few weeks for you to be able to pop in and visit us here. And I'll remind you, we are doing selective visits. They are socially distanced. They are within the restricted government guidelines of six people um, coming or six households coming in. Therefore, that is available to be booked again via the emissions email and via Helen Walklet. So if you haven't been here, which most of you I know haven't, and it's really important, especially if you've got increased apprehension anxiety, um, it's really important to allow you to come and see that and to walk around. But what I wanted to reassure you, Kathy, is we've got lots of things on the way, haven't we, to support you as well in terms of the transition and induction days. Absolutely. As you know, we have transition work that will be uploaded onto our website and you will be getting an email from Mrs. Walklet um, just, you know, showing you where that information can be found. That can be work that you can be doing over the summer, just making sure you are ticking yourselves along and ready for us um, to start with us in September. And also in September, we do have 
two dedicated days for your 12 to have their own personal induction. So we're making sure you get that personalised welcome as well. And it's not it's, it's not a case that when they arrive in the school, they just jump straight into the immediate lessons. It's quite staggered as they start getting used to the academy, finding your way around, getting used to your teachers. Um, and actually, we've got many videos available and over the next couple of weeks. You'll have the videos introduced and staff will be part of the tutor team. Um, those that can support and the key people and leaders, not just myself and Miss Benley, who are going to talk to you. So again, give you a chance to get to know some faces prior to starting here in the academy. Um, so just to really highlight the website, most of what we're saying tonight is yes, absolutely in the booklet, but it's also available on our website. And just to really push out the virtual button, please, because not only can you find lots of different videos from myself and others. In fact, I put one on late last night, actually, early hours this morning, which was in the events around the latest opportunity for students to go gliding and flying as part of our partnership with the Air League and saw into success for future pilots and aeronautical engineers. But at the same time, we've also got these virtual 3D tools. And this is an incredible piece of software um, that you can draw into and you can zoom around of our building. You can zoom into any classroom. You can walk around the building and really get to grips. It looks quite big there, but in reality, we are quite a small site here. That said, we're very excited at the moment that we've just put in an application for a four and a half million pounds, in fact, five million pound extension on the building. In fact, it would actually be just over here in this gap over here that we're looking hopefully to hear over the next month. And that building expansion is all focused on six form facilities, increasing the workspaces, the private study areas, the dining experience, but also including lecture theatre, additional workshops and classrooms for six form as well. So we're really proud of where we are with our six form and continuing to grow and develop that. And we're excited for you to come and join at a really exciting point in our journey. In fact, entering our 10th year next year, as an institution and myself and Miss Benny have been here since day one, day one. since yeah. day one we're one of the few and Miss Walker in fact as well who's on today we've got the dream team tonight um, who've been here since this was a car park in 2011 and have been the whole way through and we're absolutely delighted to be welcoming you into our 10th year next year so why do people choose to come here in fact we've got over a thousand people that have applied to come here next year and that's because it's all about standing out we really pride ourselves on making sure that we do exactly what we say on the tin, bit of a catch there towards Ron Seal, but more importantly, it's the fact of how can we help you develop over two years and stand out, not just from your academic qualifications, but widen that for your enrichment, your experiences, your working with employers, and such as the CCF, developing those extracurricular leadership, teamwork skills and communication skills that are gonna make you absolutely thrive in your future. The RAF Cadets is really, really popular are one of those routes heading in. We have about 100 students a year go into those, but specifically the sixth form, it's another opportunity for you to actually go and lead and support and run. And it is run by our sixth form predominantly. And you also get to go on a paid RAF leadership courses which support you in your career. In September, we've also got some other new opportunities. We've got the police cadets starting in September. We're really excited about that. We've already got some um, ex-students who are really fundamentally part of the specials and the volunteer police service. In fact, they were here only um, uh, last week, in fact, actually working with us. And also a really exciting one is we've now got the Royal College of Nursing uh, cadets as part of that and the Royal Engineer Cadets as well, nursing supporting us. So this is for those people who are really looking to go into medicine. And I know there's a lot of you we met last week talking about wanting to go into become a doctor, a surgeon, to become a nurse or work in many areas of the NHS. And this would be a really exciting opportunity for you to develop an extra part, part of your work, but also that necessary work experience to apply for these types of roles and to stand out at university. And, and Kathy, you spend a lot of time doing UCAS applications and standing out is really important. Absolutely. Our motto in the sixth form is make yourself different. So all of these um, opportunities that you will get will help you stand out from the crowd because we understand that as um, an institute that it's not just, it is, you do need good grades, but you need those wider experiences on top of those good grades to ensure you get these fabulous places, either at degree or apprenticeship level. Flying's popped up, and as I just highlighted the video, it's just gone out live on our website and pushed out there. So again, we're delighted we've just been given a new classroom over at Cosford. Um, so we've got students now in the sixth floor, maybe Wednesday, traveling to Cosford to actually go and work at uh, Cosford in the um, new classroom and in the new workshop there. And they're now building a very similar plane to what you see on here, a two-seater glider. 
um, a fat glider, sorry, two-seater um, plane like a Cessna aircraft. So a phenomenal opportunity, and that's supported by Slingshot, um, and again, the Air League as part of that, so another exciting project. Um, these are students, for example, working on a Jacobs project, and they go out on a Wednesday and go up to town, or virtually at the moment, clearly with lockdown, but they work alongside, they rotate around many different areas of Jacobs Engineering, which includes infrastructure, rail, Australian rail, civils, huge different things. In fact, Jacobs is now one of the largest engineering companies in the world. And many of those students, in fact, about 100% of those students on the placement last year were offered um, routes into degree apprenticeships with Jacobs as well, which is really exciting. A couple of other examples, uh, we've talked around things like the, the UTC, CCF and events such as Field Gun. They're just opportunities again, as Miss Bentley said, to make yourself different, to stand out and to really give you that edge and that confidence when you go off to these interviews for the top apprenticeships, the top degrees and UCAS to say, you know what, this is why I am different. We've continued during lockdown, that hasn't stopped. Yes, we've had to tell things back. Yes, we've had to use virtual opportunities. But as you can see here, this is a number of our students, but also including some of the top engineers and chief execs of some of the largest companies around, including, again, Jacobs, uh, some of the top vice president of the company, interviewing them, doing experiences. And in this case, students were presenting to them what they'd learned during their time. And again, that feedback direct from employers, not just your teachers who value you, of course, but more importantly, real engineers, real scientists, real business and health people giving you that feedback and supporting you in that journey, which is fantastic. The university continues to play a vital role in what we do, not only leading our board and supporting the development, but also through supporting our expansion, our use of their facilities and also supporting the opportunity for students to gain those pathways through into the university. And last year we saw a big increase with 40% of our students heading into Aston and also now we're seeing that real drive towards their healthcare and also their medicine units as well. And there's opportunities to apply to things such as the Doug Ellis pathway and then pathways into engineering, which allow you then not only to potentially get a lower offer from UCAS, but also to get that extra workshops and experiences along the way to help you stand out during that journey. I'm not going to mention too much on this. I've talked about it quite a lot already in the last previous slide, but as you know, what makes a UTC different and why you're choosing to come here is not just the quality of the facilities, the quality of the teaching and learning and the outcomes, it's the role of the employers, as we mentioned. And these just keep expanding each year. And more importantly, as we see at the moment, it's companies coming to us. We had one for HS2 a couple of weeks ago saying, we need five apprenticeships. Can we come to you? What have you got? Please, can you make sure you push your best students towards us? So we're seeing that as a real throughput of pathways from the learners here into those roles. Finally, to talk about other things, we've got the business studies, uh, real big demand, obviously growing. We know it's the biggest sectors we're seeing in the city, again, driven by not only the health sector and also the um, engineering sector, underpinned by business studies. In fact, the vast majority of apprenticeships we've seen over the last 12 months has really been driven by business. And we're delighted not only that we run a fantastic business unit in all of our engineering courses, but we also have a phenomenal A-level and also BTEC business course where you can complete a full course worth three A-levels and you can see here very clearly it covers a whole plethora of areas of business, accounting and finance. And as somebody myself who's doing my MBA at the moment, Masters in Business at Aston University, absolutely every one of those units on the left, not only do you study level three, is exactly what you'd study going into degree level, business, management, accounting and finance and clearly into things like the MBA as well. They're exactly the same modules that I've been doing as well. So I really would push that as a unique opportunity. Another exciting thing that you may not have heard about when we first met you uh, earlier on this year is the role of art. And we're delighted to bring in a new art curriculum, an outstanding um, AST, uh, Advanced Skills Teacher and Leader of Art now into our brand new art facility at AUEA. And the reason we've chosen art is, again, we've had art integral to our curriculum for a long time in all our design units and our engineering units but actually what we're seeing is a large and increasing number of students wishing to go into areas such as architecture and from that we know that art plays such a significant role 
that we wanted to really enrich and support the art curriculum. And this is going to be directly not only fine art, mixed medium and digital art, it will also draw some quite unique aspects across into our wider STEM areas. And you can see from the top things like one of the units in year 12 you'll study is human anatomy and brings from that science into that with those artistic drawings. So a really exciting course to do. And again, you can apply to do that as part of your A-level provision here. On that note about A-levels and where they fit in, Kathy, you can tell us a bit about our pathways. Absolutely. Um, on this slide, there's quite a lot of detail um, on the slide. So this is actually in your parent handbook as well. So you've got that electronically if you need to refer back to it at a later date. Now, this is all about you choosing the right pathway for you. Before you even start here, I'm actually going to talk to you about what you're going to do when you leave, which seems a little bit odd, but we need you to start thinking ahead so then you can work backwards. OK, so what do you want to do possibly at the moment? What are you interested in doing at degree or apprenticeship level? You need to think about those entry requirements, do some homework, do some research, because then that will inform you of what you need to do um, at this level in, with regards to your pathway choices. Then we've got five different pathways up here on, on the slide at the moment. We offer five different pathways and they are all STEM related pathways. Um, they all reflect the three key strands that Aston University also based their curriculum on, and that is engineering, health and business. Now, the first block on the left hand side, the elite block, that is where you can choose three or up to four of the nine A-levels that are listed. And as Sir said, we have got that addition of the A-level art within that block. You have got the option in that block to also do further maths. However, there are some entry requirements okay, within some of these subjects. So in order to do further maths, you do need to be achieving um, at least a grade eight at GCSE maths to be able to study that. Now, this elite pathway is most suited to students who would possibly have that realistic aspiration to apply for courses at places like Oxford, Cambridge, who want to do medicine, dentistry, veterinary science, for example. There's also that option in there to have um, an EPQ, um, to study an EPQ in year 13. And obviously, if you are one of those students who have an early application um, for UCAS, then you will get that support as well. Now, the, actually, the entry requirements, so we do an average point score where we would add up all of your, um, or the, the top eight of your GCSE results and we will divide that and get an average point score. The average point score for this pathway is a seven. OK, and obviously that is because of the high edge and um, the high the, the, the requirements needed for each of these courses. We will also require at least a five in GCSE English and Maths. Now moving on to the academic one, the pink column. OK, this is very similar to the elite pathway where you can still study the EPQ. However, you would just choose three subjects, OK? And in this block, there is no option to do further maths, but you can still do A-level maths. Now, the average point score for this block is 6.5, so just slightly smaller than the elite block, um, slightly lower. Um, but that is because you haven't got that fourth A-level to be studying. The entry requirements, though, for GCSE, maths and English are still the same. You need a five and to do A-level maths, you will require at least a grade seven to study at A-level maths. Uh, the professional plus, now these are very popular pathways. So if you are interested in either professional plus or professional pathways, you do need to get here um, on enrolment as early as you can, which will be explained to you later um, in the presentation. Professional plus is our BTEC pathways. So we have BTEC opportunities in business, engineering and in health. Um, and that is our extended diploma courses. Our extended diploma courses are equivalent to three A-levels and they all include exams as well as assignments. And that's really important because these are now, we are now doing the RQF syllabus or specifications for all of them and they all require exams within those courses. Um, you do have um, an option in the Professional Plus to actually study an A-level alongside that. And that's because if you do your research, like I said to you um, earlier, for like universities, some of them like Durham University, they do require you to have um, a BTEC engineering course plus A-level maths in order to study civil engineering, for example, at their university. So like I said, it is important that you do your research first so you can work your way backwards to make sure you are choosing the right pathways. 
The average point score for a professional plus is a 6.5, so it is the same as the academic um, average point score as well, but that is because of the, the, the huge workload that is required within that pathway. Um, again, you need a 5 in maths um, and GCSE English and a 7 plus if you would like to study A-level maths. The professional pathway, so the darker green, um, that is engineering, health and business, exactly the same as the previous column, but in this pathway you wouldn't study an A-level alongside it. There are options where you can do level three core maths if you would like to just have a little bit of extra maths alongside it, but that is an option for you. If you do again do your research, you will realise that actually many of these courses, if you achieve them at the top level, distinctions, triple distinctions, or many of our students get triple distinction stars, that is equivalent to a triple A star at A level. So you will be gaining access to those degree um, courses and degree apprenticeships when you reach that level. Um, the average point score for a professional pathway is a 4.8 and finally our um, other, our last um, pathway is a technical pathway and for this one it is engineering only and we offer a BTEC diploma which is worth two A levels whereas the other BTECs in the professional pathways they're worth three A levels. Okay so in this pathway um, you do have the option to study the diploma with core maths However, we will still expect you to have your GCSE English and Maths. If you haven't quite got your GCSE English, there is an opportunity where you can reset that and then you wouldn't do the level three core Maths. You would do the reset in English instead. The average point score for this pathway for the Diploma in Engineering is a 3.8. When you come to enrol with us, um, obviously we will be looking at your results, we'll be adding it all up, doing all the calculations for you, so please don't panic, but then we will then apply your average point score to whatever pathway you are able to follow. Great, and I think just on that technical pathway, obviously we, we suddenly get asked, you know, do we do more GCSEs, etc. in a sixth form? The answer is no, we don't have those level two courses, but that's where the technical route is really good, because what it opens up is it opens up the routes into foundation degrees at university, and, and I think a lot of people don't know about foundation degrees and they sit often with a year before going on to um, a main degree. So if you do that route um, and especially we're going to talk about tags shortly and maybe your result wasn't quite what you wanted or the situations around COVID means that maybe you have been impacted this year, it's still really positive that it keeps you going towards that direction of engineering. OK, six form life. Um, I'm not going to lie, it is absolutely 100% very busy for you. You'll be doing something all of the time, whether that be working in your classes or doing independent study for you know, the homework that you might receive. Um, you will receive your own personalised timetable, which will include independent study periods on that timetable. So you'll have your lessons, but you will also include independent studies as well. Now, initially, that might be a bit of a novelty to start with, that you have the, this time where you haven't got a lesson. However, you need to quickly understand that that time is given to you in order to stay on top of your work. And, you know, that time needs to be used productively. And you are six formers, so we want you to build your independent skills. And we would expect you to be working in these six form study areas in the building and um, getting on with your work independently. Um, now, assessments, assignments, milestone um, tests, they all will start coming in thick and fast at sixth form as well. OK, so each subject or every unit and every teacher will have content that they will deliver. But then after that, they will then need to test your progress and test your knowledge. OK, so these types of assessments do tend to come at the same time. So again, it's all about time management and being able to um, just put yourself, you know, put yourself in and apply yourself productively across all of those assessments and assignments. You do have different lunches as well compared to the lower school, so you are treated differently as in, you know, as a sixth form student. You have different areas, different lunches. You have got the opportunity to go off site if you need to, um, as long as you haven't got a lesson. You do have sixth form privileges and obviously as long as you are keeping your attendance, um, meeting our expectations with attendance and progress, then those privileges will stay your privileges. And obviously, privileges can be removed if we do have any concerns. 
Um, we mentioned Make Yourself Different and this slide just literally gives you a bit of a flavour of how you could make yourself different at our sixth form. Um, you will be given so many opportunities. Obviously this year in, um, in the sixth form it has been slightly restricted for obvious reasons. However, you know, next year we do hope that we'll be back to full capacity um, doing all the trips or the wider opportunities or the extracurricular um, stuff that we normally would be doing. And it's up to you guys to apply. You know, you're in sixth form. If there's an opportunity that's been advertised out to you through your tutor or on the dashboard um, on Firefly, which is our VLE, our learning platform, then it's up to you to apply for those positions. Sometimes it is a, something that you can just apply for and get straight onto that opportunity. And other times it might be that there's only 10 places available and you might have to go through some sort of process to actually earn yourself that place. But like I said, they will be out there for you to apply for. So we want you to stand out from the crowd to as many of these opportunities that you can do, as well as staying on top of your work and your progress, this will make you a really um, employable person at the end of your journey. So I mentioned Teacher Assess Grace before, and of course we've had such a strange year. And I would just say to you, first of all, that I've, I've just been blown away by the resilience and the integrity and the attitude of certainly our year 11s, but speaking to many of the head teachers and visiting schools, which I do around Birmingham, I know that's absolutely the case for you. You know, you've been given a tremendous challenge over the last 18 months in regards to the situations uh, for your whole of your GCSEs. And of course, it's a strange situation to be in that you are now essentially waiting on these teacher assessed grades. But in some way, the positive, those teachers have known you very well, and they've put that together and I know from here and the work that we do with the quality assurance and the exam boards actually I actually value the robustness of what those qualifications will be and those outcomes so we will be taking those teacher assess grades from your schools if you have concerns around the teacher assess grades it may be you're going through the appeals process it may be that there's other circumstances which has led to um, why there may have been an adjustment you need to come and speak to us don't just think there's no point coming, there's no point, I'm going to give up. Do come down and have a conversation and we will listen and we treat every single person individually. And uh, Kathy's been through and talked about the entry requirements there and absolutely they're there. Really important to make sure we don't put anybody on a course which is the wrong course there. But do come and have that dialogue, um, it's really, really important. And as, as we mentioned with those, um, those courses, they go very, very quickly. Um, you've applied, as I said, we have over a thousand people apply to us offered out those places but really once we get into the involvement days we'll talk about in a moment it is absolutely vital you come and secure that place um, on your course we've offered you so first of the 12th of august is the new GCSE results i've put it in red i'm presuming that everyone's picked up on it you know it's certainly affecting me i've had to come back from my holiday early um, because clearly it's a week early than it would normally be so first of the 12th is the results day you will go to your school, there may be virtual results in your school depending, but in most places I imagine you will go and collect your results. We are then open for your enrolment. It's a physical enrolment here, but you have to book an appointment. That's absolutely key, that's under the COVID rules. You need to book and you do that via Eventbrite, just like you've done tonight to get onto this event. There are a set number of appointments per day, so book early. Those events are going live, you can already shortly um, from next week be booking those events for the enrollments. Um, you'll then obviously go through and look on the enrollment day, you'll talk about your choices. So some questions we often have coming up and preempting a question is what happens if I put my application form I want to do a BTEC and now I think I might want to do an A level or the other way around. That's not a problem, it is on that day that you will sit down with a professional careers expert and course expert who will take you through your choices. We will often get our laptops out and start looking at UCAS and looking at apprenticeships with you and say, where is it that you're wanting to get to? And often we have parents come away saying, wow, that actually felt like a careers interview, not just an enrolment. And that's absolutely integral to what we do. We will not put you on a course that doesn't lead you in the direction that you want to go. It's not just about saying, I want to get a random group of A-levels. It's going to be the right combination, the right courses to move you on to the next stage as well. You'll need to bring with you various different things like your ID, there's enrolment bits and pieces around resource fees and all of that will be explained to you and there's a series of things you can do. So do plan to be here for a few hours as part of that enrolment. As mentioned, day one is 12pm to 5pm 
on that same day as the results, so the 12th of August. We then have some subsequent days following that, but as Kathy mentioned a few moments ago, it is highly likely, and has been for the last several years, about the last three years, that pretty much by nearly middle of lunchtime of day two, the vast majority of the most popular courses, specifically the BTEC engineering and, and science, are already full. So it's absolutely vital that you get here early. If you are going away and you're not here, that is an increased risk. It means that you need to have somebody coming to represent you, and ideally, we need to be looking at a way of communicating, having those conversations with you. Otherwise, by the time you get back, those places may well have gone. COVID is going to be still here. We know that. In fact, we're seeing that increase at the moment. I've just come out of meeting today. We will expect bubbles to disappear, but the role of staggered start, the role of social distances, even masks and certainly lateral flow testings are still going to be here throughout. What I'd reassure you as students and parents is that we've led the way locally, nationally, and regionally on that. Both we've seen that in the press and in other things where we've even had things like the Guardian following us around because we've been able to adapt very quickly to that, not only in our building, but our military um, position we have here in our military support we have as part of our CCF in our coronavirus and test centres, but also how we've delivered all of our learning online and the ability we've gone to very much live lessons very quickly. And in fact, still today, we utilise that daily as part of students who are in and out of school based on social distancing and isolation at the moment. I've mentioned the six form handbook. This really is the absolute guru of everything you need to know. It effectively is a representation of what we've covered in the presentation tonight. If you haven't received that email with an electronic copy, please do reach out to the admissions team and we'll make sure you get that sent to you. And again, it's available on our website and a hard copy professionally printed will be there for you as part of the enrolment process. We're going to pick out a couple of the key dates then going forward and talk to you about um, some of the things that you should need to know from this guide. OK, so these are some key dates and times. I'm not going to go through all of them, but um, our official term starts on the 2nd and 3rd of September. But as you can see on the slide, there are actually teacher training days. There are dedicated Year 12 induction days on Monday the 6th and Tuesday the 7th of September. So they will be the first days that you will then come into the sixth form um, in September. You will be told what days you will need to, to, um, to come in on, either the Monday or the Tuesday. You'll be told that at enrolment. It all depends what college or what tutor group you get put into on the day. Um, here is probably some, yeah, some day to day stuff that you might, um, are going to need to know. So um, you can see the student week now. Each timetable for each student is all personalised. So I can't say exactly when you're going to start and when you're going to finish. However, the day runs from 8.40, which will be the start of lesson one. And for some days, you'll finish on a Monday. Um, on a Monday at three and a Friday at three. However, on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, you'll finish at four. Now, as I said, each timetable is different. You know, everyone studies a slightly different pathway possibly to you. So therefore, there will be times where you might not need to be in at 8.40 because you haven't got a lesson one. OK, or you might be able to go home at two o'clock rather than wait till four o'clock, depending on your timetable. But like I said, those independent study periods that are given to you are given to you so you can be doing home uh, some, some work, some independent study work. And that can be work from home. OK, however, if you prefer the environment and you're more productive within school, we would expect you to stay on school as well. Each tutor, um, each of you as a student will have your own dedicated tutor um, like attached to you. So you will be um, with a small group of students and they are sixth form specialists. So they understand your UCAS journey um, and your education journey to possibly get to an apprenticeship or to apply for university. So they have actually, most of the team have just actually seen through the last year 13 cohort that I've just left this summer and they are there now ready and waiting for you guys to be starting and I'll be advocating one of those tutors especially for you. You'll see them every single day. So you'll have a block of half an hour every day where you'll see that tutor and you'll review things like attendance, your punctuality, on top, has, um, on top of delivering our PSHE programme, which is also integral to developing you as a wider and a, as a whole person. 
So one of the key things is obviously uh, how we communicate. And um, I've had, I think maybe over the next week or so, we've got an article going into Tessa about this, and about the fact that one of the things we found going through the last two years of lock, uh, lockdown and closures is our communication really, really improved in the fact that actually we took away one of the key points, which is reception and the ability of that one single line. I know it frustrates parents trying to reach the members of staff you want to reach. So we provide you all that information. Every one of our members of staff not only has um, their email address, but we now also have direct Teams numbers as well. We're completely a Microsoft Teams certified school here. So it means that you can reach out, you can regularly uh, reach out to myself and I meet the parents all the time, um, both virtually and in person and have communications by email and by phone. And it's really about the size of our UTC, which makes us very, very attractive to parents and students, is that ability to keep and work together. And that's available also in your diary as well. And we also talk about the triangle, don't we? Yeah, I'd like to refer to it as a communication triangle. So you've got the teachers in one corner, we've got you guys, but as parents, guardians, but we also have the students. And in that triangle, as a sixth form triangle, you know, we all need to be communicating with each other. We all need to be on the same page. And, you know, if we all work together, then that is where we get the best and the best outcomes for our students. It's about getting the balance right because, you know, as a parent, absolutely, you want your child still to keep the very best of what's about being a school. And we do that, you know, you are integral as Kathy has said to that relationship, not just like a college maybe necessarily where it's just between the, the college and the student. But equally as a student, you want that independence, you want to be treated like an adult, you want it to do and lead and drive your own destiny to do with your education and qualifications. And therefore, that's why you're an integral part of that communication process as well. So we are part of that. You've seen obviously Miss Kathy Benny's right next to me. The other person who's not with us tonight who with me is Ruth Acton, who's the assistant principal who supports across the entire school as well, um, both with safeguarding and wider pastoral. And you'll meet her very shortly as we go on into the introduction of um, staff over the next few weeks online. Business stress. OK, we have high expectations of our students and that includes, you know, how they look and how then their appearance. We do have a business dress or a uniform that six form students have to wear. Now, we are um, happy if you get that uniform from the high street store, but we do stipulate that it needs to be of a dark grey colour, which is what you can see on the screen. Um, and that would need to require um, include a blazer, um, possibly a waistcoat. That's up to you. Um, and obviously trousers with business shoes. Now, for the for the males, we would expect you to be wearing a specific six form tie, which would need to be bought um, on enrolment days. Um, and girls, that's up to you. But ties are actually optional for girls. Okay, but like I said, that can be bought from our um, our supplier, who is Clive Mark, or you can go out to a high street store and buy your own suit as a. As six form students, we want you to look professional. We, we provide a professional environment for you, so therefore, you know, if you look the part, you will play the parts, so to speak. Yeah, uh, people often ask about um, the three piece suit, and actually, that's put together by students. Um, this suit here, obviously, the Climax suit was helped designed and, and again selected by students here. We don't allow jumpers, okay? So, we don't allow jumpers at all in the academy, we don't have them underneath jackets because we are wearing a suit rather than a blazer and a jumper. So that's why we see a lot of people wearing the waistcoat uh, and waistcoat options. And I think students are really proud to do that. Um, and again, we have that ability on the mixed uniform. Again, we have people wearing skirts, we have people wearing trousers. It, it needs to that development uh, as you move on about selecting them. It's about making sure it's really smart. And I would just highlight the shoes. I spend a lot of time moaning about shoes or talking with parents about shoes. But again, we know these hybrid trainers, etc., exist out there, are often very expensive. And so sometimes parents get caught up by buying these expensive shoes and get very upset when I say they're not allowed. So I'll remind you, it's a business show to talk about what would you expect to see a lawyer wearing or someone going to court and going to and working in the business sector in town. But equally, we also see engineering boots as well being used as well, especially with students working in the workshop as well. Now, these next couple of slides, I would say, are poss possibly more for the parent guardians amongst the audience tonight. Um, this is just pointing out our sixth form agreement. So we do have certain policies within the sixth form. Now, Sir, as mentioned before, you know, we're not a college. We're not just a come and go kind of um, institute. We are still very much run like a school, but we do give you those privileges and we, there are slight differences to sixth form compared to the lower school. We do have an attendance policy, so we track attendance 
really, really to the, to the finest detail to make sure that, you know, you are attending all of your lessons because attendance and progress are joined up. They all go hand in hand together. If you have high attendance, then your progress will also probably be also high as well. Um, we also use that for our bursary. So if you are eligible for a 16 to 19 bursary, we will take into consideration your attendance. And if they are not, if your attendance figure isn't meeting our um, expectations of 95% or above, then we will take that into consideration regarding if whether or not you are eligible for that bursary um, on a three term payment. Uh, we also have a conduct policy and intervention policy um, as highlighted there on the slides. So we have like a chart or a flow chart where we will work through. So uh, what we expect is what you can see at the top in the green boxes. We expect positive behaviours. Um, we have something in school called the seven R's where, you know, in, in enrolment students, you'll understand what the seven R's are in more detail. But that's where we expect you to be um, demonstrating resilience, respectfulness, role model, for example. Um, we also expect, like I said, good attendance, 95 percent or above. If things start to drop expectations, you know, they're not they're not meeting our standards. As you can see, we start putting intervention in place and that could be something like um, a phone call home. We mentioned about the communication triangle before. It could be a student report or as we go on to the next slide, if things persist, obviously things become into the red area. And eventually, if things are not improving, whether it's progress or attendance, then we would look to be obviously um, looking elsewhere and seeing what other pathways would be available to you at that time. That's a really good point. You know, we, we highlight the positives and drive them for more opportunities, you know, but we also have to mention that end as well in the fact that we are absolutely um, a drive in sixth form here, one of the leading sixth forms in the city, and you need to absolutely make sure you maintain those standards. Otherwise, unfortunately, students do lose their places as we move through um, year 12 and into year 13 as well. So it's absolutely vital that you continue to work hard, but we will push you and we will support you and work with parents along the way to help you get there as well. Um, lots going on with progression and careers. I've mentioned a lot tonight about that. And again, that's driven throughout the entire time that you're here in the academy. And why is that? As we said, it's about where you go and the destinations. Um, and, and that's why we've got some of the top destinations in the country. In fact, 100% students um, last year went on to uh, degrees, onto apprenticeships or into employment. 81% um, of our students will go into the university sector at the moment. It, it was slightly le less previous years in hiring apprenticeships. We saw that dip in apprenticeships last year, understandably because of the situation with COVID, but we often are a USP, our selling point is around the university. And as we talked about that for that is also 40% of our students choosing it, head off into um, Aston University. But saying that, our students also go all over the country to a whole different plethora of universities and also courses as well. And this diagram just gives you a, a little variety of all those ones. And yes, there's some clear leaders over the years. You can see here from civil engineering to mechanical engineering, but actually we start, especially in the oranges in the latest years, you'll see all of the latest health ones coming through, medicine, nursing, aerospace, and some of the wider areas. And that's because the courses don't refocus you with those, um, those nine A levels or the BTEC in those key distinct areas of business, health and science, clearly there's a huge wealth of opportunities in those uh, areas as well. So that's important to really make sure you can access all of those courses moving forward. So that brings us to the end of our presentation tonight. We haven't done too badly. Um, we're on track of where we wanted to be to be finishing um, on your notes, a bit of a different experience sitting there at home, listening to this on your phone or by your um, your laptop or, or, or cabinet and I hopefully these are this designed you'll have the recording as well that you can drop back into it and see certain sections but now's the opportunity to have a look and ask any questions to us um, we're going to find out if we've got any questions up there and to see uh, I'm going to have a little look around to see if I can see any questions as we move through as well I'm sure somebody will be popping down as well to help me um, answer some questions. We've got a few coming up here. This is where I've got to really test my, my eyesight now. Uh, I'm going to try and see if I can make it a little bit bigger for us today. Guys, questions could be about anything regarding enrolment, about courses, options, you know, sixth form life. You know, please obviously, you know, ask us anything 
to do with the six one. So I can see a question there that says, what is LRG and why do students do this? OK, LRG stands for Learning Review Group, and that is your tutor group. And that's something that we call it. We do call them tutors as well, but that is your dedicated tutor time. You will be as part of a learning review group that is, you know, about 20, 25 students in that group. And that's where you will review your attendance, your progress, and you will have that PSHE delivery um, from your tutor as well. You see that tutor, like I said before, once a day for half an hour. Look, I'm going to move a little bit closer. I'm getting old now. My eyes, are, uh, my eyes are green. I've got some questions within here by my glamorous assistant. Thank you so much. OK, so what is an EPQ? Uh, OK, EPQ is something that I actually deliver, and that is called the Extended Project Qualification. That is something that you will pick up in your 12, sorry, in your 13. So you will complete your first year of study in your 12. You will then apply to do the EPQ because I only have a limited number of spaces. And obviously I need to make sure that if I am adding to your workload and adding to your pathway, that I need to have those students who are ready for that extra additional work. So good attendance, good progress, and it's something that you can um, focus on anything that you want to write about. And most people do a dissertation, um, 5,000 words, but it is an opportunity where you can make something um, make a model, make an art piece. This could be linked to possibly the art opportunities in school as well. Um, and then you would then support that with a piece of writing as well. It's really good at universities when you go to an interview. It's like a focus point. So if it is to do with your career, a lot of the students currently um, have been doing it on something career based. Um, it's a, a talking point then when they go to university and within the journey of the EPQ, you develop certain skills. So whether or not it is career based, it doesn't have to be, but the skills that you will develop will be so paramount to you when you go to university. So research skills, referencing skills, um, you know, time management, being able to plan your work, plan a report, how to write a report, etc. So all of these skills that you develop from along the way is what I will be grading you on. I think one thing the EPQ as well, it, it does come with extra UCAS points. So sometimes that can also help, yep. especially if you're looking at certain courses. And again, as mentioned, as you just said, then it helps you stand out uh, and support you. And in fairness, you know, if you're going against the best students and the best courses, they would have done EPQ as well. Uh, so again, it allows you to be competitive. A couple of other questions coming in there. So I uh, mentioned what exam boards do we do? Well, we do a variety of exam boards based on the different subjects that we do. So on our website, you will see there's a section called in the sixth form zone. You'll see the sixth form curriculum and subjects, and then you can click on each of the subjects on there and it will tell you which exam board you do. So example for our BTEC courses, they're all done by Edexcel, and then it will take you into the maths courses and the um, and various different A-levels and which specific um, exam board we do. We do different exam boards depending on the different courses. Uh, another question is about travel and the clean air zone. Um, so first of all, in your um, handbook, you can send and, and again, physically it will come to you. I'll just reference it, I think, on the top of my head, it's about page 12, it is page 12, look at that from memory. Um, we've put a lot of information in there about the clear air zone, clean air, clean air zone. Now, our clean air zone is actually that side of the building, and that's on the building, we're outside the clean air zone. We're sitting right on the border of it. I'm presuming the question may be from a parent, asking maybe about dropping children off, but it could also be from a student maybe looking to drive themselves and travel in. Well, the first thing is we don't get very many uh, students wishing to drive in because it's a city centre and parking limitations. We encourage our students to come by public transport. But additionally with that, um, the clean air zone is just outside, as I say, outside our building on this side. And we've identified areas on the opposite side of the ring road where you'll be able to drop your child off. As I said that, it is worth checking because there's a significant number of vehicles which are now allowed as part of the clean air zone and therefore there's a link in there for you to check and to undertake to find out whether you are affected but again i'd reassure you please come and talk to us um, if that's needed as well uh, the other question that i'm going to touch upon it and maybe you join a bit later was talk about routes to medicine please and links with the Ashton university medical school okay so actually i'm busy planning um, an aspirations day for our current year child at the moment i've just managed to get it all confirmed because we do have those links with aston medical school and actually I've been, i'm bringing back 
one of our alumni students who's just done her first year at med school at Aston University. She's coming back to do um, an hour's presentation Q&A session with our um, potential students that we have here at the moment who are looking to do um, study medicine as well. So they're going to get that like real life scenario, real life chat from um, from that student, um, which I think will be absolutely vital to them in making their choices. Um, in turn, we have like a society, like our very own like medical society. So once you are understanding that you know you want to study that pathway, um, we would be then asking you to join that society and we would have sessions and meetings every so often to help you with possibly the exams that you need to book yourself in for, to get those scores that you need to get to get into certain um, universities and um, just making sure that you know you are you're together, you're supporting each other. And I have another member of staff who's also um, a chemistry teacher lead, whose um, experience is also um, in the medical um, the sector as well. So her knowledge, plus knowledge from our links at Aston University and the healthcare programme at Doug Ellis at Aston University as well, that gives you enough experience and enough knowledge to make those informed choices. And as I mentioned earlier, I'd also throw in the Royal College of Nursing programme we've got as well and really get involved with that. Um, so as we move towards the final questions now, um, just to reassure you that if you have got more questions, we'll continue to answer those online um, as well and we'll come back to you and ensure those we pub put those public uh, for you to see as well and whatever people have asked tonight. And please do reach out to any questions um, after this point by using the emissions number and we can also that. If you want to, we can do principal or um, assistant principal tours around where we will walk around like we're doing now, but actually walk around the building and show you different things and talk to you as well if that's really helpful and useful. Uh, sort of questions pop in the last question, which is around bursaries. How do I apply for a bursary and what are the requirements of that? And it's there's a number of things really. Some of it is obviously clearly linked to your situation. Uh, there's different types of levels of bursary from those. Um, and it's, it's means tested as well. It's about your background and also your your home situation. Yes, of course, can can add to that depending on the amount of level of bursary you can apply for. But equally, pretty much nearly the vast majority of students are eligible to apply for some form of bursary. You do have to maintain those high levels of both academic work, but ultimately attendance as well. That's reviewed termly by Kathy and her team, and therefore students are then awarded a bursary. I would say that the vast majority of students receive their bursary. It's very rare that students won't. And in fact, over the last couple of months and last year with COVID, I think everyone's received the bursary. Everyone's received. Yeah, because we understand importantly the additional pressures that are around both internally and externally to do with the costs around study. I'm sorry, it looks like we've lost Mr. Lot Wheaton there. Um, if you need to spare with us a couple of minutes and uh, I'm sure we can get the um, video content available to you. Thank you. OK, everyone, so first of all, thank you for your. Thank you for your time this evening. I apologise, I've had to run upstairs to a different computer and clearly you can see I'm on the headset now. We've just had a little technical difficulty. The battery's died on the laptop, even though it's um, even though it's plugged in. So a little bit of a strange uh, one for you. But I just wanted to um, thank you very much for your evening. This video will be available for you. 
Um, there's a couple of questions obviously still coming in that we will go through and answer for you and make sure you get those um, questions answered. So thank you for that. Some really good ones. Is there a specific place to buy the uniform or do we just come to sixth form to purchase it? You do need to go to either two places. You can either go to the high street as and purchase off the high street to any grey, dark grey suit from the high street or you may go to um, our supplier, which is Clyde Marks, and we'll make sure that information is sent to you separately, but it's also within your handbook as well. Uh, will this meeting be recorded? Was unable to view the event until now. Just joined it. Yes, absolutely. The whole event is there um, from the very start for you to go back and watch and, and to see as we take it through. And the REF cadets will talk to you about that in enrollment, how you apply for that uh, and gain that experience as well. Um, and finally, the last question, really good question, will be sent an email on how to apply for enrollment. Yes, absolutely. Those dates are going live on Eventbrite and just after this event, you'll be sent that information. So thank you very much. I hope tonight was useful for you. Again, apologize. We just had that little uh, technical difficulty at the end. We we're literally one minute away from finishing perfectly uh, and the laptop died. So do apologize. But I hope tonight was really useful. I know it's never going to replace being a physical face to face event, um, but I hope it's reassured you about the steps to come here and we look forward to seeing you on the opening day of enrollment, which is the 12th of August. Take care. Stay safe. Thank you.